Uh, we're going to talk about memory decks cards. And again, this is a series for beginner crafters. So all of you crafters out there who have been doing memory decks forever, please chime in, share your experiences, share your tips. That's really so helpful. What I'm going to do is just start with some memory decks cards that I currently have that I've been receiving as part of the birthday challenge. And just we're going to take a look at them and how some of them are the same, how some of them are different, and just give you a general idea. Um, before that, someone asked the question in Instagram, what's the difference between a Rolodex and a memory decks? So Rolodex were those old cards that they kind of resembled this shape, but they were a little bit shorter. And back in the day, before all the electronics, you could actually attach someone's business card. They would fit. You'd tape it right on there. And you'd put it in your little Rolodex machine or, you know, holder. And you could turn it, and they would flip through, and you could pull up people's information. Their little business cards would fit right on the Rolodex. Memory decks are a crafty way of using the Rolodex idea. And it was thought of by Heidi Swap, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with. The dimensions are slightly different. The cards are a little bit bigger, but that is not to say that that is a hard and fast rule because when it comes to memory decks, you can really do anything you want. The only thing that holds true is you want generally the width to be the same. And we'll go over all the measurements. And these are cards that we typically decorate and trade or send to our other crafty friends. And instead of our business information, our office phone number and address, we put on more personal information about our social media channel, um, maybe what our birthday is, what colors we like, what crafty styles we like all that different kind of information so that when your crafty buddy wants to pull up information about you, first of all, they have a beautiful card to do it on and it's you know something that they can enjoy just to look at. Then they can flip it over and see you know, Joanne's birthday is March 1st and she really likes the color pink and her crafty style is shabby chic. So if I wanna make her a card, perhaps, I have that information and I know the best way to approach a card for her. So as you can see, maybe even from just this one, this has the little holes and the lines, the spaces in it, which looks different than, for example, something that was punched with a memory dex. It's a little more squared off, but it doesn't make a difference. They both work just fine. So this particular memory dex card is from Angelica. And this, again, this is part of the My Sweet Treats Challenge. But you'll see this looks like it's a one piece. She has her information on the back. And she decorated it. And I'm not sure if she cut this in herself or this was already part of a die that she used. You do not need a die for today. You do not need a die for Memdex cards. I'm just showing you some examples of different ones. This one is a little more traditional shaped, and this is from Bethany Parlett. She's um, your crafty BFF. And you notice that it's just one kind of rectangular shape where the corners are rounded off. And you can do that with a corner punch, or you can even do that with your scissors. But it's just one shape, and she decorated it on the front and layered up all kinds of ephemera and stickers and... Um, embellishments. So really fun. You can have so much fun with these. Here's another one that's more of, this actually is more of a traditional Heidi Swap Memdex shape because it has this little tab here. Let me flip it over. So as you can see, you have the traditional rectangle, but it has the tab that comes up. Those were typically the shape that you used when um, Heidi Swap's die was used to make your memory decks. On this particular card, the person who made it is, oh, Cheryl Taylor, beautiful. And what Cheryl chose to do instead of writing her information on the back is she made a little card that she stuck down and she put all her information 
in here for me. And a lot of people are choosing to do that so that it's not visible all the time. Some people are making cards. Some people are making little pockets on the back to put a card in. So it's really up to you. It's the sky's the limit when it comes to memory decks. Now here's a really interesting one. This is from Jessica Marvel. And I'm not sure if she did this on a Cricut or a Silhouette because you'll notice it's a very specific shape. And if any of you have those cutting machines, you are able to create all kinds of really interesting shapes and dimensions and build in the memory decks. You can also cut out any shape that you want. And again, I'm gonna show you how to make the holes without the memory decks punch or without your cutter, but it doesn't have to be a rectangle. It can be any shape you want it to be. This is particularly a tall one and that's okay. Um, I'm sorry, this is from this is from A Day in My World. I'm sorry, this is from Wanda, A Day in My World. So it can be any shape you want it to be. This is particularly tall. So depending on the kind of memory decks holder you have, you may want to keep that in mind. There are some that spin around where, you know, you pl place them one in back of the other and they spin around like that. So something like that might be too tall. But if you're going to place it in a holder that's, stand, that's um, stationary, it's just perfect. It'll be fine. Sorry, Wanda. I me make sure I'm giving you credit for that. This is from um, Jessica Marvel. And you can see it looks like she had, if I flip this over, this one piece here is a heart shape with the memory decks piece at the bottom. So again, this is either a die or she cut this out on her uh, um, Cricut or Silhouette machine. And then she just layered up lots of fun goodies on it. She has this girl and the ballerina and rosettes and the camera. So there's a lot of fun and dimension and chunkiness in this one. And then this is one I made a long time ago. Just to show you, anything can be a memory dex card. I had a swan cut out that I liked. I cut it out, I think, on my Cricut. And the swan is um, a separate piece. But then I took this piece of memory decks that I cut down and then added it to the swan. So it looks like a, a memory decks um, that's a shaped memory decks. And, well, it is a shaped memory decks. And you can do that as well. One of the things I highly recommend is when you start make yourself a template. Just make one, choose some nice heavy stock, 110 paper, and make yourself a template so that you always have it. You can always refer back to it. A typical memory dex card is four inches across and three and a half inches up and down. Now, again, we want to try to maintain that four inches across, but this we can have wiggle room with. We can play with it. So we're just going to take our piece of cardstock here and I'm going to cut it to four across and three and a half. And I have my lovely Fiskars cutter here. So let's see, four across, got our four inches. And then we want three and a half, three and a half. I'll do it up here so it's easier for you to see. Okay, great. Can I pass that to you? All right, so here we have it, our four going this way, our three and a half this way. Now the next thing that you wanna do is measure out where the holes need to be for it to sit in the memory decks holder. So the first thing we wanna do, and all you need, actually I should go back, take a step back. All you need to do this is your cardstock, a ruler, a pencil, a pair of scissors, and a hole punch. And I mean just the cheap hole punch you can get at the dollar store, the one that punches the single hole. So what we're gonna do is the first thing you'll notice is that these holes are a half an inch up from the bottom. So I am going to take my ruler and I am gonna measure up 
a half inch from the bottom and I just turn the paper, it makes it easier for me. Okay. So I have my half an inch mark right here, okay? The next thing we wanna do is measure over one and a half inches and two and a half inches. And those are where we're gonna make our little marks to put our hole. So I have it at half an inch and I'm lining that up, make sure it's straight. And I'm gonna go over to, whoops, there we go. Let's put it at the zero to start. One and a half inches and two and a half inches. Can people see that? No. Let's see. Yeah, I think you hold it up. yeah, there we go. So I have two little dots. They're a half an inch up from the bottom, one and a half inches over, and one and a half inches over. I mean, an inch over, I'm sorry. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take our hole punch, and right on those little dots, we're going to make punches. One. Just want to make sure it's right on the dot there. Two. So I have my two holes. Now the next thing you want to do, and I have my own method for doing this just because I'm not great at measuring things out spatially, is I usually like to just make a slit right in the middle so I can use that as my guide. I just slit right down the middle of the circle. So there I have my little cuts. Then I want to go about an eighth of an inch on the right of that slit and an eighth of an inch on the left of that slit. And there you go. I have my first memory dex punch. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Cut on either side of that slit and here I have it. There's my memory dex card. And you'll see it'll work just as well. See if I put it over this. You can see it works just as well and it's going to fit fine in your memory dex holder. And again, I really want to make sure I credit Liana from It's a Deal for this because she uh, put up this video a few years ago when I had started crafting and this was how I learned to do it. And it's a really fun, unique way. You don't have to go out and purchase the punch to do this or you don't have to have a die. There's your memory dex card. Now you can have fun and start decorating. I'm just going to show you a couple of other things too. Another thing I wanted to show you was the memory dex with a pocket if you don't have a die for that. Let me flip my trimmer over and what I'm going to do is make sure that I have my four inches across But now instead of my three and a half inches up and down, I need to accommodate for adding a pocket. So I'm gonna make it three and a half, four and a half, five inches long. So I have my four inches here, this way, and I have, what did I say, five and a half? This way, five and a half that way, okay. So I'm going to take, I want to make sure again, it's three and a half inches long. So for the extra two inches, I am going to score this at my two inches. There we go. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can fold it forward. Well, you can fold it either way. And you can use this as the front or the back is what I'm really trying to say. So if you make a folded pocket, you can use this as the front to add little goodies to your memory decks, or you can use it as the back, like someone else did, to tuck a little card in with your information. But this is how you make a pocket memory decks. I'm gonna need my glue. The, can I have the other bigger one? Yeah. And all I need to do here is just add glue or double-sided tape to the two sides. I'm going to fold that over, make sure that's nice and tight. 
And there again, I have my pocket for my memory decks. And we'll show you again how to cut it. We'll go through the process one more time. There, can I have that pink corner rounder too? I probably should have had. <laughs> it's a little pink thing that has, uh, it's a square, a little pink square. Or you know what, if it's not there, that's fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just, you know, to make it a little more decorative, you can just go ahead and round your edges. I don't need it. I'm all set. I did it with scissors. And that's good because if you don't have a punch, you can still do it with scissors. I'm fine. And I'm going to round this edge. And there we have it. They're not exactly even. I'm not the best at this. But there we go. And my, uh, you can see my blade is getting dull too, so I'm just going to trim some of that off. Okay, so I have my pocket memory decks now. And what I'm going to do is flip it over. So you can see the measurements again, four and a half by five and a half. I'm going to say I'm going to use this pocket in the back for my information, my little card that states my YouTube channel, my crafty likes, my colors. And I'm going to come back and we're going to make this all over again. We're going to do it again. So just for people who didn't see it the first time, I want to measure up first a half an inch. Make sure I'm in screen here. So there's half an inch right there. Nope, that's not right. I'm not measuring right. That's way too much. Sorry guys, I had the ruler set in the wrong place. Half an inch right here. And I want to go over one inch, one and a half inches and two and a half inches. One and a half, make my little dot. Two and a half, make my little dot. Then I can punch where my dots are. And then I can go ahead and make my slits. Again, I just slit in the middle, and then an eighth on one side, an eighth on the other side. A slit in the middle, an eighth on one side, and an eighth on the other side. Now, there I have it. There's my memory decks. If this bothers you to have the memory decks piece cut through into the pouch, the only thing you need to do is make it into two steps. Just cut out a square and glue it on three sides and make your pocket. So either way, it works. Then I can go ahead and let's say I have my information on a little card. I can go ahead and tuck it in. Oops, I lost it. I it's too small a piece. <laughs> so I can go ahead and just tuck it in. If you are so inclined and you want to spend the money and you really love making memory decks cards, the tool that a lot of us use is this Heidi Swap Puncher. And you can purchase this on Amazon or scrapbooks.com or any of them. And all you need to do with something like this is take whatever you want, whatever shape, put it in and line it up. You have two gold lines on each side line it up and then just give it a quick punch and there you have it. One thing I will say about the Heidi Swap punch is that if it's too thick, so for example, if I were trying to punch through both of these, I don't know if anybody else has run into trouble with a 110 pound piece of paper and maybe a decorative paper on top. I can't punch through. I don't know if it's my puncher or that's just the way they are. So I generally have to end up doing two separate pieces and gluing them together. So again, I'm just going to line this up and then I'm going to glue this together and I'm just going to cut around it, make it easy for myself. So I'm just going to glue this right here. Make sure that's even. Okay. 
there's not a lot to it. It's just the creative part, having fun with it, and, you know, again, making it anything you want. And then I'm just going to cut around this. So I'm just going to kind of use this as spring theme. I found this cute little orange butterfly I thought I'd add. And then it's just a matter of being creative and playing around. So I'm just, I don't know, I'm just playing around. I have some ephemera here I'm thinking about using. Just create something springy and dimensional. That might even fit right there. Well, that fits right in the middle if I want to add it, but then I'm going to lose that flower. So I just take my time. I play around with things, mm -hmm. see where I want them to go. I'm just going to add this. A little off at a little angle. Oop, I don't want to cover that memory dex hole. There we go. And then I'm going to take some little foam squares that I get from the dollar store. Go out and buy these soon because they're going up in price. So everybody get to your dollar store sooner rather than later and stock up. Oops, I'm making a mess. I'm a messy, messy crafter. Let's see. Just add in my little dots here. And I'm just going to take this and add it right on top of the other one. There we go. Okay. And see how fun that is? It just gives it a little bit of pop up, a little bit of dimension, so it's kind of gives it depth. So I always like to do that when I have two of the same thing. And then I'm just going to play around some more. Maybe we can add a rainbow. Oh, I have a little, a smaller butterfly too that might work better instead of that big one. So maybe this is, yeah, I think I like the smaller one better. And again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just have fun. Okay, maybe I'll put a little sentiment on here. I have a bunch of these little sentiments. Crafty Girl says, everything takes me forever. I'm super slow. I'm super slow. Mm, let's try the blue one. Blue one. We had a little different color in here. So there, I mean, it's not beautiful. It's, um, you know, something I put together. I can even, you know, add some cute Nouveau drops to it if I want. Maybe just add something in the little center of the flower for some and more dimension. That's all there really is to a Memdex. Again, you know, normally I could spend hours doing this, but just something that we put together for fun today. If you want to make sure you write down these measurements, You can always rewatch the video, but make yourself a template so that you always have this to refer back to. Um, I think that's all for today, really. I don't have much more to say about Memory Dex cards. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Take care now. Bye-bye.